Hello, uh, we are on uh, chapter 12 of Advancing Vocabulary Skills. If you want to open your book to follow along, uh, we're on page 72. Um, so this is uh, the second chapter in, in Unit 3. Okay. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and, and start off with these ones. Um, exhort. The school counselor gave an impassioned speech to the parents in which she exhorted them to make every effort to keep their children off drugs. On the eve of the invasion, the general exhorted the troops to fight bravely for their homeland. Um, so what exhort means is urge. And if you don't know what urge means, which may be true, um, what our urge means to uh, is to push someone towards uh, doing something. Um, in, in terms of exhort on page 73, it's number eight. It says to urge with argument or strongly advice. Plead earnestly. So exhort is, when you exhort someone, you're normally trying to get them to do something. You're asking them uh, to do something. You're trying to convince them to do something, but you're trying to do it in a real um, strong way. Uh, you're strongly encouraging them to do it, either because it's for their good or maybe it's for the good or for the larger good of something. So in the first one, um, the school uh, counselor is trying to convince uh, the parents to, to, to try to keep their kids off of drugs. Um, uh, so the, 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 the counselor is trying to get the parents to to do something, which is good, you know, keeping your kids off drug. And the second one, the general, the leader of the army, is exhorting the troops, the people in the army, to fight bravely. So he's trying to get to do them to do something. So normally what, uh, when you're exhorting, uh, you're asking someone to do something that, that is uh, difficult, but for a good purpose. Um, so, you know, a teacher might try, try to exhort his students to uh, study for the test. All right, so moving on, our next one, flamboyant. Um, Lily can't resist flamboyant clothes. She'd wear a hot pink dress with a gold satin trim to a funeral. The flamboyant pianist always wore sequin suits and glittering jewelry when he sat down at his silver piano. And if you look at the picture there, it's a flamboyant house. So what flamboyant means is flashy. Um, whenever I think of this word flamboyant, I it, I don't know that it's related at all. I don't think it is. But the the beginning of it sound, sort of looks like flame, and flame means fire. And if you think of someone, if you were to drive describe something as flaming, um, it, it's something that's going to attract a lot of attention to you. Uh, to something. So when we're when uh, we describe someone's dress or clothing as flamboyant, it means that they're wearing um, loud, we say loud clothes, clothes that are going to attract people's attention. Um, so on page uh, 73, it's number five, very showy, strikingly bold. Okay, so is, if, if you describe someone's dress or personality as flamboyant, it means that that the way that they act is in a way to attract attention. Now, one thing, um, keep in mind, this this is different from ostentatious. Ostentatious means that you're showing off your wealth, but flamboyant is more just uh, dressing in a way that gets you lots of attention. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, uh, an expensive way. All right, um, foible. Uh, serious character flaws such as abusiveness are hard to look to overlook, but foibles such as drinking soup through a straw can often be easily tolerated. I accept my husband's foible of leaving clothes lying around, uh, Kia remarked, because it lets me be messy without feeling guilty. So what a foible is, it's a minor flaw, fault. Um, so it, it's something that someone does wrong, but it's not a serious thing. Now, if we look at this word, it'd be really easy for us to think that it was an adjective um, because it ends in um, uh, I-B-L-E. 
and we know that a lot of words uh, end that way. Um, but but this one actually isn't an adjective; it's a noun; it's a thing. Um, on page 73, we have foible is number six, and it says a minor weakness or character flaw, a minor fault in behavior. Um, so in the first example, the foible is drinking soup through a straw. Now that's sort of weird and it's not really something that would be socially acceptable but it's not the worst thing in the world um, in the second one the husband leaving his clothes around um, it, it depends on <laughs> I guess it depends on how you feel as a wife or as someone living with a person um, but in this case uh, the, the wife sees it as a minor flaw not not a serious um, mistake uh, that someone would make. Um, normally you can see in both of these ones that foibles, foible is talking about flaws in behavior. So we wouldn't say, you know, my um, my painting has a foible in it, in it or my computer has a foible in it um, because it's not like a mistake or a, a problem in something. It's a problem with um, how someone behaves and it's normally about um, uh, the person's behavior is not um, socially perfect or maybe rude or un unpleasant to other people, but not seriously so. Okay, uh, so our next one here is innocuous, and this one does fit our pattern. It's O-U-S at the end, and this is an adjective. Um, although most children engage in innocuous pranks on Halloween, some get out of control and do serious damage. Experts at the Poison Information Center can tell you if a household substance is harmful or innocuous. Um, so what innocuous means is without having bad effects. So if we look on page 73, it's number two, harmless or inoffensive. Um, so innocuous, innocuous means that something is maybe not good, but it's not seriously bad. Um, so in the first one, Halloween, um, for Halloween, you know, we say trick or treat. Um, the, the treat is obviously the candy, but if you don't give the person candy, uh, they're going to do some trick. And this would be an uh, innocuous trick, something, something silly, like maybe putting um, shaving cream on your car or, you know, something that's not going to cause any serious damage. Um, in the second one, it's saying, you know, this uh, household, uh, a household substance, like so, say maybe dishwashing soap or, or, or um, I don't know, some other cleaners. Uh, the this uh, poison information center will tell you is if you drink this, is it going to hurt you or is it just innocuous? Now we say it, it's innocuous, meaning that, yeah, you shouldn't. You, prob you probably shouldn't drink the soap. It's probably not good for you, um, but it's not going to hurt you. So in, in that sense, that what, that's what um, innocuous means. It, it, it's, it's describing something that is not, not necessarily good for you, but is also not, necess is not harmful to you. Um, so I'm trying to think of an example where it wouldn't, uh, where it wouldn't work. Um, uh, I can't think of one. Anyway, if you think of one, uh, uh, bring it in and we'll talk about it in class. All right, next one, magnanimous. And this one, again, O-U-S is an adjective. At age five, Jonathan already learning to be, uh, sorry, at age five, Jonathan is already learning to be magnanimous. He hugs his baby sister even when she hits him on the head with a wooden block. Last Thanksgiving, someone at work drew a funny picture of our boss as an enormous turkey. When the boss saw it, he was magnanimous. He laughed, saying it was terrific, and even hung it up on over his desk. So what magnanimous means is forgiving. But um, it, this means you're, you're forgiving even in a situation where you have a right not to be forgiving. So in, the, in this first one, the, the kid was hit by his little sister with a block. And at five, you know, 
maybe now at our age, or maybe not, but um, at our age, you know, if a little kid does that, a baby does that, of course, we're not going to get upset. But we wouldn't say we're being magnanimous. We'd say Jonathan is being magnanimous because it's normal at someone who is age five that if they get hit, it's normal for them to cry and to be upset and to be mad at their little sister. But he is very generous um, in his forgiveness. Um, in the the uh, second example, you know, for someone to draw a picture of, you know, if you're the boss and someone draws a picture of you as a turkey, you know, a turkey is not a flattering thing to be compared to. So it's it's actually pretty in, pretty insulting, um, and that could be the sort of thing that a that a boss would get upset at and get angry at but in this case he he just laughed it off he he even though he had a right to be upset he wasn't upset so on page 73 it's number nine noble in mind and spirit especially generous in forgiving okay so this has this meaning of that like i mentioned before that you're very generous um not not with money but with your forgiveness so even in a situation where you you have the right to be upset you're still forgiving all right so this one looks like masochist but it's not it's masochist and it's a noun so this one ends in ist um and it would be sort of like artist um uh, it, meaning a person who does something. Um, so psychologists are trying to understand why masochists obtain satisfaction from suffering. A masochist's idea of a good time, said the comedian, is getting hit by a truck on the way home from having all his teeth pulled. And so what a masochist is, someone who enjoys being hurt. Um, on page 73, uh, masochist is number four, a person who gains satisfaction from suffering physical or psychological pain. All right, so there, there is the, the opposite of a masochist, which you may have heard of, you may not have, is a sadist. And a sadist is someone who enjoys hurting other people. A masochist is a person who enjoys being hurt. So there's a weird kind of um, sexual fetish um, where called sadomasochism, or and in that one person, if you have a, a a pair of people, and in one person is the sadist who likes hurting, who likes hurting, and one one person is the masochist who likes being hurt. So the sadist would maybe hit the masochist, and they're both getting pleasure from it because one likes to do it and one likes to receive it. Um, so a masochist, you know, to describe someone as a masochist is definitely not a compliment because people should not enjoy being hurt. Um, this is not a normal, this is not a normal behavior. Um, so, all right. Meticulous. Uh, again, O-U-S, here's an adjective. When you proofread your own writing, be meticulous. Check every detail. Uh, Marcus is meticulous about his appearance. He never has a wrinkle in his clothing or a hair out of place. And what meticulous means is very careful. Um, it's number 10 on page 73. And here it says extremely careful and exact, showing great attention to details. So if you look at the... Um, you look at the picture there, the, it's, it describes the garden as meticulous, um, a meticulously kept garden. Um, and you can see that every detail is, is very carefully attended to um, there. Someone put a lot of time and energy, or probably several someones, put a lot of time and in, in, in energy into making that perf perfect. Um, but uh, when we describe someone as meticulous, uh, it, 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 it's generally a positive, uh, a positive thing. Um, it means that the person is very careful about what they do. So, uh, you know, in the first example, before you turn something in for a grade, you should be meticulous about it. You should. We have an expression in English to go through something with a fine tooth comb, which and what that means is that you look very, very carefully at at each part um, of things. Um, 
uh, the word that we had before that's sort of the opposite of this um, is, uh, I'm blanking on it, um, someone who is um, a perfunctory. Someone who does a perfunctory job is not meticulous. Someone who's perfunctory is just sort of going through the motions. They're not being careful about it. But someone who's meticulous is, is looking for every single mistake or every single thing that could be uh, wrong with it. Um, all right? Rancor. Um, the rancor between my uncles has lasted for 20 years. Ever since Uncle Dimitri married the woman to whom Uncle Sergi, Sergi uh, had proposed. Uh, when there is a long-lasting rancor between divorced parents, their children may also start to share this bitterness. And rancor is a deep hostility. It's number one on page 73. Intense hatred or ill will. Long-lasting uh, resentment. So, um, rancor... Hostility means means hatred, right? Um, if you're hostile towards someone, it means that you don't like them. You hate them. You 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 really don't like them. Um, probably, I think the the best the best example of this not not the best, but a really good example of this is we would say that there's a lot of rancor in Israel Palestine. Um, there. There, on on both sides, on the sides of a lot of Israelis and on the sides of a lot of um, Palestinians, there's a deep hostility, a, a deep hatred between um, those two. I know this is going to date the video, but recently um, Benjamin Benjamin Netanyahu, um, you know, his his rancor it seems was so deep towards Palestinians that he he a accused. Uh, a Palestinian of of giving Hitler the idea for uh, for killing all of the Jews um, in World War II, um, but but rancor is this 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 very very deep um, hostility, and you'll notice here in both of these cases that rancor is followed by between. It doesn't have to be, but normally when we talk about rancor, it's it's between you know it's a hostility between two parties. It could be three parties, and in that case we would use among, but um, you can see in both of these it's followed by um, between. All right, recrimination. So this one ends in T-I-O-N, so it's a noun. The couple's session with a marriage counselor failed miserably. It began with the husband and wife hurling accusations at each other, and it never progressed beyond these recriminations. When Laney's father and her teacher met to discuss Laney's poor grades, they exchanged Laney's, uh, they exchanged rec recriminations. Each accused the other of not helping her to do better, helping her do better. Uh, so recrimination means accusation in reply. So we can get this reply part of this from the beginning because we have here. It, it's not re, it's ra, but it's sort of like re in that it, it's again. Um, so uh, recrimination on page uh, 73 uh, is number seven, and it says an accusation made in response to an accuser, a countercharge. So recrimination is not the first thing, but it's what you say in response to someone saying you've done something bad. So um, in the first in the first case, you have um, um, a husband and wife who are upset with each other, and so the husband, the the wife says, "You never listen to me," and the husband says, uh, "You always talk to me," or or whatever. But they they go back and forth, arguing and um, uh, accusing accusing each other. So the rec recriminations. Um, is this, we say this sort of um, back and forth. Um, those of you who are married or in a relationship, you've probably had these kind of conversations with your husband or your wife where, you know, one of you is upset about one thing and and it, it never gets resolved because you just keep on going back and forth, um, accusing each other of bad things that you've done. Um, uh, in the second one, uh, the, the father and the teacher are arguing with each other. They're both accusing the other person 
of being the reason why uh, Laney is not doing uh, well in school. Um, so, you know, recriminations is just sort of this back and forth. Um, to go back to the, sorry, to the Israel-Palestine um, issue, uh, you know, there's recriminations on both sides. Uh, uh, the um, uh, Israelis will say the Palestinians are, you know, uh, kidnapping people or suicide bombings, and then the uh, Palestinians say, well, you, you're you occupying our territory and you're not... Um, you know, uh, you're controlling our trade. So it's just this back and forth. You did this. No, you did that. You did this. You did that. Um, okay. Um, and our last one here is repugnant. Uh, my parents find uh, some of my eating habits repugnant, but I see nothing offensive about mixing peas and ketchup with mashed potatoes. A snake is repugnant to many people. Slimy, they say, shivering with distaste. However, snakes, snakes are not slime at all and are mostly harmless. And most are harmless. Um, so repugnant means disgusting. Um, on page 73, it is number three. It says offensive, distasteful, repulsive. So repugnant means it's something that, um, that uh, it's an adjective that you would, you would use to describe something that you really don't like or that you will dislike I guess which means the same thing um, so um, in both of these examples um, you know in the eating habits and uh, with the snake we're saying something is repugnant because it's it's gross um, or or disgusting um, we can also say you know uh, some someone's behavior is um, repugnant and by that uh, by that, it, it would mean um, uh, the kind of behavior that makes you not want to be around someone. So, you know, there's some people who, who don't use deodorant, and that can be repugnant, because if you have to sit next to them, it's very unpleasant because of their smell. Um, there's, But there's also some people who their behavior um, is is repugnant. Um, maybe they they always uh, well. I mean, it depends on who you are, but maybe you know someone who who uses uh, swear words all the time, even in, in in situations where you wouldn't think it was appropriate. Uh, you might think that that was repugnant. You, you also might not. Um, but it it means that it's something that you find offensive or distasteful or um, repulsive. All right. So just quickly go through uh, these ones here. So this is sentence check one. You can follow along on page uh, 74. So uh, why is it that bat seems so blank? Do we think a flying mouse-like creature is distasteful or do we associate bats with vampires? Um, it was blank of the greens to forgive the driver who ran over their dog. So the first one is repugnant and the second one is magnanimous. So repugnant means that these bats are disgusting or repulsive and magnanimous means that they they forgave the person who ran over their dog the person they had every right to be angry at that person but they forgave them battered women who stay with their abusive partners aren't necessarily blank they don't enjoy being hurt but often they can't see any way to escape although nail biting is only a blank it can become maddening to a companion who observes it day after day. Before the football game, the coach gave a fiery pep talk. He blanked the players to fight for the honor of the team and the school. So the first one is masochist. So um, a battered woman means women whose, whose uh, boyfriends or partners um, beat them, hit them. Um, they're not necessarily masochists. They don't enjoy being hurt. Um, in the second one, biting your nails is, is just like a minor annoying thing, but it can become really serious if you see it every day, if you hate it. Um, and in the last one, the, the, a pep talk means a, a talk designed to motivate people. So he's, he was urging the people to fight for their uh, team. To an allergic person, foods that are normally blank, such as milk or wheat, can cause discomfort and even serious illness. 
the long-standing blank between the two women finally ended, uh, finally came to an end when one of them fell and the other rushed over to help them. So the first one is innocuous. So these foods that are not normally harmful, right? Um, like like milk or wheat, um, but in some cases they can be very serious. Um, um, they can they can hurt people. And in the last one, this the long-standing argument or hostility or hatred between the women came to an end. And then our last ones, the angry neighbor traded blanks. Your wild kids trampled all over my flower bed. Well, your crazy dog dug up my lawn. Some jobs needn't be done in a blank way. For instance, why sweep every speck of dust off of a floor that's only going to get dirty again in an hour? On New Year's Day in Philadelphia, string bands play mummers, strut their stuff in blank costumes designed to outshine all the other bands in the parade. So the first one, these are recriminations, right? One's complaining about the kids, the other one's complaining about the dog. Um, and the next one, you don't, when you sweep, you don't have to be meticulous. You don't have to be very, very careful because it's going to get dirty in an hour. Um, and then the last one, the costumes they wear are flamboyant. They're designed to attract attention. Okay, so what you'll need to do is you'll need to do your online exercises and answer the questions. And we'll go over those answers in uh, the morning. All right, take care. Bye.